Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Indu. I've been working uh, with a colleague of mine on designing and implementing um, CDF frame. And today I want to spend some time going over just the overall idea behind CDF frame and, um, and then go onwards to discuss uh, some use cases that CDF frame may find in the Linux kernel. So since uh, this is a shorter presentation, I have about 20, 25 minutes. I think I want to, I do not want to get into the details of the format, but I do want to go over uh, just some key ideas to give you enough background so you can judge the value proposition for uh, of CTF frame format. So CTF frame um, format is a very simple format for stack unwinding, right? And it is a plain vanilla stack unwinding. There is no um, there is no state recovery. So all it allows you to do is, given a PC, you can go you can just walk the stack, and it helps you recover just three minimal um, variables here, which is CFA, FP, and RA. And uh, it is it is it is a format that you can use if your use case is fast unwinding. Um, and so we posted patches on the Binutils mailing list a few months ago. And right now the status is they are v6 patch v6 version. They have been reviewed. But if you go look into those patches, there is an unwinder based on CTF frame, and uh, you'll be able to tell that um, the unwinder is simple. And uh, the reason it's simple is because the format itself, the encodings and the representation is simple. So those these stack offsets that you need to walk the stack, they are encoded directly in the format. So there is no stack machine that is necessary to unwind, or there is no complex expression encoding that you will need to you know, implement in your unwinder if you want to do the unwinding on a you know, live unwind, online unwinding or offline, either way, right? you don't um, need any such support. So uh, since I cannot get into the details, I still want you to get a flavor of what CTF frame format is. I think I will make these two statements. Uh, disclaimer that these are oversimplifications, so there are pitfalls here. So for those of you who know dwarf EH frames, uh, dwarf EH frame, uh, inside a dwarf EH frame, you have these dwarf opcodes, which an unwinder will need to execute. And once the unwinder has executed these opcodes, it gets the stack frame offsets, which you use to unwind. Now, contrast that with CDF frame. So what I like to say here is that think of CDF frame as interpreted EH frame information. So, um, so which means that these stack offsets are encoded directly in the format. So given a PC, you get these offsets to recover CFA, FP, and RA. Now, for those of you who, well, I think most people would know also ORC here. So ORC is very, the CTF frame is very similar to ORC in principle. I do have a slide later on. They are a bit you know, um, unorganized at this time, but uh, as I show that slide, I think you'll be able to relate to um, CDF frame better. Mm, this, again, is one of the things that I think we should keep in, keep a mental note of, which is that CDF frame um, information is not tied to CTF type debug information. If you want to unwind, there is a new section that we added, which is .ctf frame. And that's the only section you need if you want to unwind. You do not need to go to CTF, .ctf section for your basic plain vanilla unwinding needs. So um, yeah, this is the slide. So this essentially shows you the, um, what should I say? This, this shows you the um, key data structure in which you keep the unwinding information. Um, for those of you who know ORC, this is, the, this is similar to the ORC underscore entry data structure in, uh, in, in ORC. Right, so this data structure um, shows you, so the syntax is, um, shouldn't say weird, but the syntax is based on pork, in, on, in pork. So, and I have cheated a little bit. I'm trying to compress a lot of ideas, here, thoughts here. So there are three flavors of CTF frame. So that's why I use these slashes to say there is CTF frame address one, address two, and address three. Basically, these are three encodings. Um, each of these encodings, the, the only variation between these three encodings is the amount of bits that you need to encode the addresses. So if a function is 200 bytes, you, do, you need a lesser size of encoding for just 
um, specifying the addresses in that function. So that's what this exploits, right? So there are three different variants of CDF frame. Um, sorry, CDF FREs. And essentially what CDF FRE gives you is um, it tells you given a PC, these are the offsets that you need to unwind from this PC, right? So there is a union here which says that um, uh, the, the, the union just says that either it will be an offset of eight bits, all these offsets are going to be eight bits, or all these offsets are 16 bits, or all these offsets are 32. Again, the second set of offsets is related to how much stack you have been going, you know, within your function, how much of the stack you've been using. And the first, the address stuff is basically how big your function is. What is the range of the PCs that um, you're interested in unwinding for this? But, for this function, what is the range of PCs? That's it. So now I'm going again. So the, this is all the details that I have to, had to give about, you know, the key ideas in CDF frame format. So let's just um, put it all together. And so CDF, this, there is a new section that we have added. This is dot CDF frame. It's a loaded, allocated section, and it will appear in a segment of its own. So it is, it is easy to, you know, start unwinding. And um, the support has been added to GNU Toolchain. The support at this time is in bin utils. We do and we will add a, a, a little bit of support in GCC, which will be only, you know, which is just like a wrapper putting everything together. So it will emit a .CFI section directive and pass it to the assembler. But at this time, yeah, you can use the assembler and pass minus minus GCTF frame and it generates a CDF frame section. So again, I think too much details maybe is not necessary. We can, you guys can take a look at the patches and we can also talk later. So support wise, yes, you can generate CTF frame. The linker will try to merge these um, CTF frame section from input um, files and um, what else? There is a library, there is a libctf frame that you can include to, if, if, you're, if you want to use CTF frame sections, you can use this library to, decode and then decode and um, find information um, from the CTF frame section. Size, um, yeah, I think this is just to give you a flavor and I do make a disclaimer here that I do not intend to show that this is um, lesser than EH frame and it, you know, says something around that, but it is just to show that, so initially my concerns were that CTF frame could, because this is interpreted dwarf EH frame, the size could go higher much higher than EH frame, and maybe not, it's not in a very reasonable ballpark, but it, the, given the optimizations that we have put in, the good thing here is that it is still in the reasonable ballpark, and that's the only message I want to send across and nothing else. EH frame in general is quite compact, right? So this is also a good sign that at least um, it's in the reasonable ballpark, the sizes of CTF frame. Um, that's it. So now let's just put everything together. So I, I, um, I have come across. Um, so we know that for unwinding, we do have dwarf EH frames, and I have come across not just one, but at, at this time I have a count of uh, three unwind formats out there. Two of them are open source, and one of them is not. I don't know the much of the details about the non-open source one, thankfully. So. Um, the two which are open source, right? They both of them have um, the the reason why they have been in they are in place, and the whole reason why they exist is because people and applications have the need to unwind without EH frames for many different reasons. So one of the arguments against EH frame is often that I do not want to I do not I want an unwinder which is less CPU intensive, less memory intensive, and that's one of the reasons why people want to drift away from EH frame for unwinding. And the other reasons sometimes are just um, that the that the unwinder in itself becomes, I think it's related, yeah. Basically they want a simple unwinder and a fast unwinder. And um, so then uh, putting everything together, right? All these on the left-hand side are the requirements for, uh, for unwind formats. So asynchronicity is very important. So let's look at that first. EH frame is great at that. CDF frame, I do want to say that it is almost asynchronous. It is not completely asynchronous. And if you want to get in details, I do have a slide later on, I can explain. But I do want to add here that it is uh, very close. It is closed. It is quite, um, it is closely, it is almost asynchronous. <laughs> and uh, for the application specific formats, um, 
I think it's a, it's a tricky thing here, either to say yes or no, because just representation-wise, I have seen that they are asynchronous, but because of the way they are generated, you often do not have the complete unwind information, which then makes it asynchronous, right? So what is the, the commonality in all of these um, application-specific formats that I have seen is that they're not generated in the tool chain. They, all these applications tend to have their own uh, generation logic because of which these, uh, the solution now becomes um, asynchronous. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, just a quick question. I'm not actually sure what you mean by an asynchronous format. Mm -hmm. Would you mind explaining just a bit? Sure. So asynchronous means that you can unwind, given any PC, you can unwind from that PC and get a, a backtrace. Now, whether it is reliable or not, you want to be reliable as much as you can, but it just means that, that given any PC, you can unwind. Um, mm -hmm. Got it, got it, thank you. So uh, yeah, the, uh, the other desirable requirements of any unwind format is they be fast and the unwind info be small. And CTF frame fares well here. Um, simple, small unwinder, which is very true for CTF frame at this time. And we hope it will be, we want to put as much effort as we can in making sure that remains, because that's the whole um, you know, reason for existence for CTF frame at this time and should remain so. Um, CTF frame is not application specific. As we, as I see ex, uh, these application specific formats, there is one thing or the other that makes them very specific to that um, application. And it's not a bad thing because if you have an application, you know exactly that, you know, there are some requirements or quirks in that application that you can exploit to keep your metadata small. Sure, why not, right? But uh, if you want something to be done, uh, you know, like supported in a tool chain and something like that, you need to be um, inclusive of everything. So CTF frame, yes, is not application specific. Um, ABI and architecture support, CTF has support for two set of ABIs at this time, uh, the AMD64 and the AAPCS, while AR64, the two ABIs, Big Indian, Little Indian. Um, and I think that's it. So. I hope at this time you have a high level idea of what CTF frame aims to do and what it offers. So um, the questions that I had for the audience here are, well, many different dimensions. One of them is I wanted to explore if uh, there are people interested in seeing if CTF frame can help out in the OBJ tool for our generation. So I know from previous LPC and this year talking to people that um, there are issues around control flow reconstruction, um, especially on AR64. So the value in this would be that, um, you know, whatever be the control flow, uh, I'll just finish this thought, whatever be the control flow, since you have the online information generated by the tool chain, it's in, the information is there in the unwind format. So if you use something like that generated from the tool chain, then you do not have the need um, I think, as I understand it, you do not have the need to reconstruct the control flow. Yes. Yeah. So I was going to say on ARM64, the big reason that we need to do this at all um, is for asynchronous unwind. <laughs> um, and as I understand from what you presented just now, we don't, we don't have enough information there to do some of the asynchronous cases that we care about. Because one of the big one of the big problems we have is disambiguating when the link register contains a legitimate value. When it duplicates what's in the current frame record pointed to by our FP, and when it's the only thing that should be used. So but that's the major thing that we need to do on ARM64. And if we can do that, we can get asynchronous online generally. There's a few special cases that we have to handle for trampolines <laughs> and so on. Um, but I don't believe that the, this as is helps there, and we would need some more information for that. No, CD frame will just do it for you out of. Well, the current implementation will do it for you. What is not, so this is what I, I say here. So the offsets tell you, if there is an offset in the FRE, it tells you that this is on the stack. And if there is no offset, then it is, it can, it can, it is right, it is 100% right to say that it is in the link register. So the information is encoded such that if, if there is an offset, it has to be on stack because the compiler sees it as it generates the um, code that it has saved the um, the f it, it, it has it has saved the link register either on stack 
or it remains in the register. So the un CTA frame will give you that information. I think, yeah, for AR64, this is a relevant slide. Uh, this is the reason why I say why I say that this is not um, fully asynchronous. Now there are two, left and the right. So let's focus on the right one. So basically what I'm not sure right now is that uh, AR64 also has um, these instructions called um, BLRs, right? So where you, where, where, when you return the ad, the link register is not just LR, it's some other register, right? So that's something that CTF frame, frame does not encode. CTF frame, the encoding itself, um, th this is implicit in the, in, in, the, in the format that if it is a stack offset, it has to be on stack. If it is not, it is LR and no other register. So um, that's why I said it is not fully asynchronous because that information is not encoded in CTF frame. Okay, so BLR is only used for forward edge calls. Um, we do use RET. RET can take a general purpose register as well, other than the LR. Uh -huh. uh, compilers don't currently generate that, but we do use that in a few trampolines today, like F-trace trampolines and so on. But those could be special cases. Okay, then it's then fine. So that's one of the reasons why I said it is asynchronous. So glad to know that it is not a common case, at least for the code generated by compiler, correct? Yeah. And the second case is that there is the CFI negate RA state. So this assumes that in the addresses that you're encoding, the upper bits are, well, this feature says that in the upper, upper address bits, it's some sort of um, signature, right? It's not complete address. So that needs to be encoded in the format that if you're reading some like PCs, you need to be sure that this just the upper bits are, you know, addresses. So that encoding we don't have right now, which will make which essentially means that if there is any function that uses these CFI directives, you will not have CTA frame unwind information for it. Okay, is that just saying, as the slide says, that a pack instruction has been used effectively, that it's been signed with? Yes, pack. if these instructions are being used, then, then the compiler will emit the CFI negate RA state accordingly. Okay, but we'll right? still have the other information saying the offsets and so on, because um, currently yes, yeah. current no, 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 Unwinder no, so completely ignores this and it just strips out the authentication bit and assumes that the address is correct, because we can reliably do that at least. Um, so it might be that we can just ignore I that. see. Yeah. Um, so I had another question is, uh, how do you, or do you see this being used at all for user space stack unwinding instead of for using frame pointers? Sorry, the question is whether I see value in user space unwinding using CTF. Yes, so yes. basically getting a stack trace from in the kernel from a user space program that does not require using a frame pointer, but can use the CTF frame uh, information instead. Yeah, why not? Is there? Uh, it would yeah. be extremely useful to have that yeah. in the uh, yeah. in the kernel. And I. I since the support is in toolchain, I think that's the first step. Once it's in toolchain, then people find it easier to use and then the format evolves and, you know, things get simpler if it is in the toolchain. So, yeah, and that's one of the things I actually wanted to talk about also asking people if they see value or if this is a use case. So, sure, all you have to do is, yeah, use the available toolchain to generate the .ctf frame and... Uh, yeah, as long as there's a critical unwinder, uh, I'll make sure yeah, every binder has is, the information. Yeah, uh, yeah, we are, we have an unwinder solution provided, but I think there can there's some little work that we would also like to do, as in the unwinder, it uses some more malocs than necessary, so there are there's some work needed there, but it is usable. It's um, so, so for instance, various architectures in the kernel they have a choice between unwinders and they have some trade offs. And so it might be perhaps an interesting exercise to demonstrate the capabilities of CTF mm. to implement an unwinder mm. for the kernel and post patches that, mm. that do so, mm. because it, it's one thing to say like, well, it, it should be simple to implement an unwinder. And then, you know, you sit down to yeah. do it and you're like, oh my yeah. God, there's so many corner cases. Yeah. What awful corner of hell have I backed myself into? Yeah, I think, thing, right. Yeah. And then, uh, and then that, that gives the community um, the ability to, to measure and, and, and assess the trade-offs themselves. And then that helps with further tool ch chain adoption if someone's able to say, you really want this format because of reasons X, Y, and Z. Yes. Yeah, so, so on, on the matter of doing user space unwinds from kernel space, um, currently for x86, we have the option of frame pointer or just plain copying a bunch of the stack and hoping user space can sort it out. Um, 
on return to user space, which would be the ideal point to unwind the user space stack, um, you could do a CTF unwind provided that the um, task you're trying to unwind has the CTF information mapped and you can find it. Mm -hmm. So that might be interesting to do, um, but it's not entirely trivial to pull off. I mean, in, at, at the return to user space point, you can take page faults. So um, the CTF information doesn't need to be loaded in memory, but it does need to be mapped. Yes, it does need to be available. And yeah, mapped is what you say, yes. If the if yeah if the program is active, I don't see why not, right? Yeah. So just one last question. Um, one other issue for unwinding we have on ARM sixty four is PLTs or procedure li linkage tables. Basically, when branches are out of range, we have to go through those, um, which get generated by the linker. I'm assuming that the CTF information is only generated by the compiler, so we would have nothing for those, is that correct? No, no, no. So here, um, the the flow is is like this. So the compiler emits uh, CFI directives. The compiler would not emit PLT at this time. Then comes the assembler, which reads these CFI directives and generates EH frame and also now CTF frame. Then comes the linker, which will link these CTF frame sections and generate CTF, final CTF, or link in these EH frames and generate the final EH frame. Also, the linker generates the PLTs. Right, so we added support for x86. We have the support that it will gen um, the linker will generate CTF frame entries for PLT. For AR64, I still have to work on that. But for x86, the linker will generate CTF frame entries for PLT. Okay. CTF frame information one, one, for it PLT. It would be very useful to be able to identify PLTs specifically um, for our unwinders because of because um, there are some cases where we do not follow standard calling convention, will not have, uh, our return address will not be in the LR at the instant we go through that PLT in some cases. Um, so being able to identify the PLTs with our unwinder, we can do a special case would be very useful. I don't think I understand that perfectly. What does it mean to identify the PLT? Um, to distinguish it from a regular function. So to, to right. just have a, some Boolean property that this is a PLT generated at length time. We can discuss this afterwards. Yes, sure, yeah. Okay, let's have a round of applause for our speaker. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I, I, I do want to take a moment to just say that I did want to get into even these um, things here, which is that if you have any ideas on how to improve CTF frame section, be it for reliable workplaces and um, other use cases that you may have seen in the kernel, yeah, get in touch with us and I'll be happy to yeah, take discussions later on. Thank you.